I'd like to say a few words of introduction now about Dr. Milan Sfer. Uh, as you know, between 2004 and 2008, Dr. Tsver served as the Minister of Education and Sports uh, under Prime Minister Jancsa's uh, government. Uh, in 2008, when Slovenia had the presidency of the European Union, he was also the chairman of the Council of European Union for Education, Culture, Youth, and Sports. In the European elections of 2009, he received the highest number of preferential votes in Slovenia and was subsequently elected member of the European Parliament. He's member of the Reconciliation of European Histories Group uh, and member of the European Parliament uh, on the Committee for Culture and Agriculture. He's also currently presidential candidate for Slovenia uh, for the SDS. Uh, and as I said, the host today, and it's actually thanks to him that this conference is actually taking place, uh, and that we're actually giving also a platform uh, to this very important issue uh, of human rights, genocide, and mass atrocities. Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to please join me in a very, very warm welcome for Dr. Milan Sver. Thank you for this introduction. Uh, distinguished Premier, the President of the Constitutional Court of the Republic of Slovenia, Ministers, National Councillors, uh, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, uh, Analysts from Slovenia and abroad, I am uh, welcoming the letter most uh, warmly in Slovenia and I'm grateful for your arrival. I also have to thank the uh, Institute for Cultural Diplomacy from Berlin for very um, good suggestions as a co-organizer of the conference, as well as uh, the executive director of ICD, Mr. Mark Donfried, whom I am greeting amongst us. I have to thank the uh, National uh, Council of the Republic of Slovenia and the President of the Government of the Republic of Slovenia. As the former National Councillor and the Minister in the former government and presently as the member of the European Parliament, I have so far organized many conferences regarding uh, human rights and freedoms, fundamental freedoms. I am convinced that this conference today, this summit, will at the end lead to a more effective um, protection of human uh, rights and freedoms. I believe everybody of us agree that our last two years in our neighborhood in the north of Africa and in the Middle East or in the so-called Arab world, historical changes are taking place. Perhaps uh, the best definition would be that from social evolution, this movement developed into political revolution. Some of that called that Arab awakening or Arab spring. Certainly these are democratic changes, but these are nevertheless slow changes or they have not been fully defined. And therefore, many political analysts say that this is though a political transition, which is not necessarily or that will not necessarily be a democratic transition. If we use the word revolution, we uh, mostly think about um, violence and uh, violations of human rights. Uh, this is especially true of uh, people living in the um, Eastern and Central Europe who are very uh, still well remembering uh, the situation after the Second World World War. Therefore, we are extremely happy that uh, some 20 years ago, almost without any violence in Slovenia, we made uh, into, uh, we went through a political transition practically without any violence into the multi, uh, uh, into the functioning uh, democracy and uh, full respect of human rights. And therefore, we should care about what is going in our Arab neighborhood. We have listened carefully to the requirements of the protesters in the Arab streets and markets and their uh, request to change the authoritarian governments. This has been done at the level of the European Union and in other fora. Unfortunately, uh, many authoritarian governments responded to that with gross violence. 
It is absolutely unacceptable uh, the very early response by the President Assad in Syria. The regime and security forces responded with extreme rights, gross violation of human rights um, involving atrocities and atrocities against humankind, including other forms of violence uh, which uh, the commun international community can damned very seriously. The international community is still very divided uh, within the Euro United Nations, unable to find the response to the situation in Syria. It was unable to convince uh, the Syrian government to take up its responsibility to protect its own civilian population. We are in the situation where all the measures for mediation, international aid and prevention have turned out to be inefficient. The international community in the case of Syria is facing a serious challenge. How to operationalize the concept of the RTP? This uh, concept uh, has been uh, unanimously approved in 2005 at the General Assembly of the UN, also thanks to Slovenia. And uh, this uh, case of Syria represents an extreme um, case where the responsibility to protect is at its test, where the first two um, pillars have not been proven efficient, and that is the responsibility of the country and international aid. The Security Council of the UN is about to uh, take a very serious decision how to prevent further atrocities, as it is obvious that Syria is unable or unwilling to do so. And uh, the time is running out and the number of victims is rising. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that, um, as many others, a more efficient mechanism for the prevention of genocide and mass atrocities should be established within the UN and widely. The president of the government of the Republic of Slovenia, Mr. Jansha, has just called us or expressed he, uh, explained uh, his uh, explanation of the initiative he presented at the 67th um, meeting of the uh, General Assembly of the United Nations in New York. And therefore, uh, we are uh, on that basis um, asking for the uh, Board of Like-Minded States to be established. This would be at the level of official government representatives. But in itself, this is not enough. Civil society also has to deal with these questions. And it is doing so. And therefore, this conference, uh, together with ICD from Berlin, we ha has been organized. It, this is about uh, fundamental human freedoms, uh, humanity, uh, human dignity, prevention of humanitarian uh, catastrophes and the first priorities among all of human priorities. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of eminent uh, international law uh, experts are here today. Um, respectful uh, individuals from various countries who care about human rights, especially basic human rights. I call upon all of you to speak about these issues in your environment, also in non-governmental organizations through which uh, pressures can be exerted on the policies of uh, states in the international community in order to prevent and uh, punish uh, the crime of the genocide in line with the convention. Uh, we will be uh, hearing during the panels various views uh, on how this should be done and what mechanisms should be established. I find particularly important the following elements. Uh, what problem we are faced with in Syria, what atrocities have already taken place since uh, the beginning of um, the peaceful protests and their uh, breakdown in March 2011, over uh, 20,000 mainly civilians have been killed. Uh, the violence is exaggerated uh, as well as uh, the use of uh, heavy artillery and um, the shelling of urban areas. Uh, mass 
murders are taking place both uh, by the government forces and the rebels. A lot of uh, urban areas have been destroyed. Um, they are under siege or being bombarded. Over 4,100 uh, refugees went to the uh, fled to the neighboring country, and there are 1.2 million of internally displaced persons. This speaks about a real humanitarian catastrophe. If we look at the problems, uh, we uh, st start with the references to the Arab Spring, but we all know that each Arab, uh, Arab country represents uh, its own sui generi case of transition. However, in Syria, we cannot speak about a transition, but about a pure and simple civil war. The situation in the Arab uh, world is dangerous for the entire region and leads us uh, to the uh, enforcement mechanism according to the Convention on the Prevention of Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. The lack of uh, democratic deficit can lead to repeated conflicts and there are other deficits as well. First, at the social level is extremely high unemployment rate among the uh, young uh, which almost in all of these countries is above 20 percent. This young generation came to the labor market after the democratic boom in the period 1990-2000. And uh, in many Arab countries, uh, this was dealt with the employment in the uh, administration. This could represent a social bump in the future. Also, there are not enough small and medium-sized enterprises. And at the same time, the young generation uh, has a full um, access to the latest information uh, technology. The next element of instability is increasing level of poverty, very high um, social differentiation. Uh, then there is a deficit of uh, equal opportunities among sex and uh, the decreasing role of the intellectuals and women in the Arab societies. In order to change these uh, societies, we have to help these countries. This should involve a general help in addition to uh, effective um, mechanisms of prevention of conflicts, which are still not in place. We also need political and social help, as well as cult cultural diplomacy, which brings additional potentials to help towards a better democratic transition in this world, including the Arab world, which will be the focus of our conference today. I wish you successful deliberations in your panels, and thank you for your attention.